Hey, what's up, my friends? Welcome back. I'm the Zim. This is the Zim video. Today we have another what I call conversations with creative uh, creatives, I guess. I don't know, whatever. And um, today, well, I'll break that down a little bit more in a second. But I'm gonna throw it over to. I didn't ask you yet. What do you like to be called? Is it? Do you like Louis? Louis? Do you like Angry Belly? Do you have a, like a nickname? Uh, do you have like a? Are you the Belly? Like what? Do you have any kind of um, stream nicknames? I feel like everybody on the stream. And like even who knows me in real life calls me like the same like two or three nicknames. Okay. Um. So obviously like the um. The channels of the Angry Belly. I like to say that I'm part of the Angry Belly because in the future I'd like to have more creatives working with me and okay. that sort of thing to make it bigger, you know. Um. But I go by Louie or Lou Dog in real life, like actually in real life. Lou Dog. So like my my family, um calls me Lou Dog like normally and then people at work have now started to call me Lou Dog so like ever since I was little Louie or Lou Dog those are the, the okay. two names I've always gone by I'm gonna try to call you Lou Dog I like that <laughs> Lou Dog because I like I mean I prefer Zim call me Zim for sure for um, sure yeah yeah but it's like I actually I was thinking about so I went to a party last night and I was thinking sure. I was thinking about I actually don't like to introduce myself as Zim I like other people to say like introduce yeah. me as zim you know what i'm saying it's like it's kind of yeah. weird because my full name is alexander like alex alexander whatever yeah and it's like i'm still there's still this little pinch in my brain that's like feels weird just saying like hey i'm zim to to the first person i meet but yeah exactly i mean my real name is luis um and so that's like my norm anyway and like people know that i go by Lou dog so it's weird to be like oh this I, i'm blue dog like <laughs> what's up man yeah, Lou, yeah no it's I awesome. feel like i'm gonna start rapping for this like as <laughs> what you know? i love this idea that um i see this future this future that like people will like be named things like like people oh, names yeah. will be like screen names will be people's real names you know in like oh, yeah. 50 years from now or something it just won't people won't even think about it they'll like have numbers in their names and all this kind of stuff it'll just be their name just be like what's up kind of like how uh people are starting to get like game of thrones names and like naming their kids that in real life like there's a lot of girls <laughs> now named aria okay. which is a very pretty name yeah, yeah. but like i was reading about how like after the season ended um the last season there was like a big just influx of girls named aria now all right let me break down this show a little bit more for you i'm so i'm the zim this is what i said conversations with creatives i'm an artist musician doing a lot of things just got my mfa i've done podcasting for a really long time i wanted to incorporate all these kind of ideas that i'm involved with and throw it into one bucket and one of the things that i've fallen in love with is game stream or like live streaming and essentially but game streaming is part of it and so that's right. for me part of this um conversation for me i think and Lou dog is a game streamer so we're going to get deep into game streaming and ideas of youtube and all that kind of stuff um so hang on with us come you know join the chat if you have questions for either of us feel free to jump them throw them in the chat we i found that it's hard for me to keep track of the chat so if i missed your question i'm sorry i apologize in advance but hopefully Lou dog will help us keep track as we go but yeah but, i'll be looking yeah I'll be looking. <laughs> but we'll, we'll we'll check it out but let's i have this kind of warm-up question i guess i'll have a there's a bunch of like get to know you stuff um For sure. that i want to ask just kind of just to just to see what you're all about and then we'll dig into some of the more like technical game streaming and other things like that but my my first initial question that I, my warm-up my icebreaker is what high school did you go to and what was your worst best or most notable memory from your high school experience oh wow uh yeah. so the high school i went to is called idea san benito uh it, it's a charter school it's a stem charter school so there's like engineering classes and like i had to take ap calculus my last um my last year there that sort of thing uh so it was it was rough in that regard because obviously I'm, I'm a creative so like math is not there you know okay yeah yeah <laughs> for me in the brain but my most notable uh high school experience i i will say high school wasn't bad for me um we were such a tight-knit crew we had like 58 people in our graduating class um so we were all friends for the most part um i was like the mc of the pep rallies and stuff so i my dec i had a decent experience one of my best memories was an ap calculus in um my senior year 
with one of my good friends, Miguel, who I still talk, still talk to to this day. He's a great guy. Um, but so I bring lunch every day to school. And for whatever reason, in the cabinets where we were sitting above was uh, 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 hot plates. And uh, as high schoolers, we were like, well, what can we do with these hot, hot, hot plates like mess around? Um, and uh, he was like, hey, dude, bring like extra lunch tomorrow. We'll heat it up in class. <laughs> And so we, you know, I was like, all right. So I had like pizza the night before. So I brought my, my pizza for lunch and then I brought extras for the end of the day, which AP calculus in my last period. And our, our teacher was out because she was pregnant on maternity leave. Anyways, we pull out the hot plates. We start heating up our pizza right there in the corner of the room. And everybody, like, we're just cracking up, having a good time. And everybody's just like, what's going on? And, and I, as far as I know, the substitute teacher was oblivious uh, to the whole thing that was going on. Um, and then the next day we did it again, but we made ramen that time. <laughs> um, so we did that twice in a row. And that is honestly like, I have the Snapchat videos on my phone and oh, stuff nice. and of, of me recording my friend Miguel, me, you know, we pulling out the pizza and the ramen. It was, it was a good time. Yeah. That, <laughs> it was a good time. That reminds, I'm going to tell a quick story. It reminds me of a story from when I was actually in middle school. I mean, it's totally not related, but it, for whatever reason, it reminds me like I used to sit, I sat in the back corner of the class and there was this in the back so it's like the sciencey hot you said hot plates and like it's probably used for like science classes and stuff right 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 right. and so like there was all these beakers set up in the corner on this shelf and somebody threw a peanut butter and jelly sandwich like at us me and this kid just <laughs> for whatever reason and we like dodged it and it went flying and like skimmed the top of the beakers and smacked against the wall and like stuck there and we just started laughing so hard but at the same time we were like oh my god we could have like destroyed all those beakers those glass beakers but anyways it was just a, <laughs> that's wonderful <laughs> a, a cor corner of the classroom food stories i guess is what right. we're absolutely what we're breaking down absolutely. so so did you say where so where where was your high school in terms of geography so san benito texas okay. uh so that is actually along the border of mexico the border of mexico is like maybe 30 minutes away okay with no trap with traffic i mean like it's my, I could see the border wall along my bus route. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's yeah. what, are you still in that area right now? No, no, no. I, I moved. Okay. <laughs> I left. <laughs> uh, are you still in Texas? I'm, uh, yes. I'm about five hours uh, north, I guess. Mm. Um, I'm in Austin, Texas now. Um, oh, Austin. Okay, cool. I'm, yeah, yeah. What's, uh, so what do you get down on in Austin? Like, what's your favorite jam? Like, I've what I hear, I haven't been there yet, but I hear there's, yeah. like, tons of great barbecue spots. Um, oh, my God. Things like that. Um, the barbecue's immaculate. Yeah. Do you have, do immaculate. You, do you have any favorite? <laughs> yeah. Um, I like one a lot called Terry Black's. Um, it's it's kind of near downtown on Barton Springs around there, uh, for those of you who know, don't know. Um but uh yeah no it's um uh that's one of my favorite spots there's also like black's barbecue which is really good it's a uh, uh more like like downtown e and there's a city like 30ish minutes away from austin called lockhart yeah it, it, it's it's very different from austin cuz it's a very small conservative uh, uh city but there's a lot of great barbecue spots like original barbecue spots that became chains later on um but yeah what barbecue barbecue cool yeah yeah well i have more questions like favorites and stuff it's like i have this list of like what are your favorites and stuff but i want to ask uh -huh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. have you noticed so like how, what do you know about austin like well, how can you describe austin to somebody that doesn't know and you know, like my my experience with just being an outside viewer right like south by southwest is in austin right oh yeah and there's yeah, like yeah, that... and there's been a big influx of like just people moving there for various reasons um like what are some vibes of the general area that you can tell us about? Austin vibes are interesting. Um, I would consider myself a, a, a liberal individual. Yeah. Um, with um, I do have some like things that are not as liberal. Like I I, say, I call myself like a liberal who who does like guns. Like I think I yeah. safely. Yeah. You're right. Like you know I've I've shot a few growing up and you know I've been playing with them. I say playing, not playing, <laughs> but you know like using them ever since I was young. Um, yeah. And so one of the things that I, I kind of think about in terms of Austin, like, is like, it's, 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 it, it puts on this facade of being liberal. Mm. Um, but because it's growing so much, I think it wants to be liberal. But because it's growing so much, they don't really necessarily know how to like draw the line behind like, 
gerrymandering and like all this like weird political yeah. stuff because there's a lot of homelessness here yeah and that sort of thing um so like it is a very liberal town while also yeah. being very conservative yeah about a lot of different things like we see marches for like pro-life you know and we see a lot of marches for like ukraine and just like a all across the board there's just like a lot of weird stuff i mean generally we do vote blue right um yeah. but yeah it, that's that's kind of the weird thing is it feels it, like it wants to be liberal but there's so many things like uh you know yeah yeah san diego so i'm in san diego it's sort right. of similar in that way because we have a very very big military um community but it's also in california which is very california yeah. tends to skew more liberal but it has that same it sounds like a very similar dichotomy in a sense or kind of interesting idea for those that don't know what gerrymandering i want to explain that really quick it's when dis yeah. district lines get drawn so that certain voters will be voting within the district so the district could, it's one of the worst things it's one of the things i talk about to myself all the time and i wish more people understood how bad it is for our society that that district lines get drawn so only voters of a certain um, type of voting preferences will be voting and it has nothing to do with the community it has nothing to do with the actual community of that area it's only designed so that making sure that voters will only be voting for one party or the other within and honestly typically it's the republicans that wanted to be drawn weird like that so that makes sure that they but anyways we don't have to get too political today yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like an interesting concept so if you don't know what gerrymandering is Look it up. It's one of the worst things. Try to make sure that you're not contributing to it um, if you become a voter. One of the things I have in my the link to all my shows is a link to register to vote. So be sure you're registering to vote. Do that whole thing. We won't, we won't like I said, we won't go too far yeah, down yeah. The, the political path. But uh, I, it's interesting. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, yeah. And um, that's cool. Um, so I'm going to jump into some more fun stuff again. <laughs> more fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. A couple of like... So what's your, this is, I've been thinking a lot lately about fandoms. What is you, I see you got this uh, Superman. I saw in your, oh, back, yeah. I saw in the background, you had Star Wars, Lego Star Wars. I saw you yeah, had, oh, yeah. I saw some things already within your little camera right here. Um, but, but like, I was thinking like, what is your fandom that you claim, like you, you put on the highest point of the pyramid, like whether it be comic book dc stuff whether it be star wars lord of the rings harry potter whatever it might be do you have a, a point of the pyramid or or do you have a couple that live up there for uh, you go first and i'll tell mine and yeah i uh wow that's a good question uh because i'm a i've been reading comic books my whole life um that's a, one of those things that when times are bad um you know yeah i I take comfort in looking and seeing what uh, Spider-Man is up to this week, that sort of thing. Um, but recently, I've uh, been getting a lot into anime. I say recently, like in the next last seven, eight years, um, I'm getting into anime a lot. And uh, One Piece has been one of those for me that has just trampled over everything else in terms of fandoms. Okay. So, like, I'm up to date with the anime. I'm up to date with the manga. I've, I've bought all sorts of things, statues, mangas. Uh, my girlfriend has done some wonderful art for me i was luffy from one year i bought a poster that's like over here uh yeah. <laughs> so yeah one piece is up there for me next to i would say um like star wars for sure okay and um i read a lot of the i have like 20 of the Le star wars legends books um on top of like yeah i would say my holy trinity to say is like star wars one piece and probably probably uh uh, uh dc Okay, DC. What? Yeah. What about DC? DC more comics than the ECU? Then, yeah, definitely <laughs> more comics. Uh, the DCEU is uh, not well liked in my household. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad, um, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, I I haven't. So I'm not familiar with current anime really at all. Like, what's popular? I'm right. I'm older than you, <laughs> and like, <laughs> are you? Yeah, <laughs> no. But yeah, yeah. I know we look we look like almost like twins. But um, what uh, what I when I think of anime, like what I always yeah. like, my brain, the first thing that comes into my brain is is Akira, so, and it's like, and that's oh, like, right, right, and right. that's like classic. So I was like feature length anime 
from when like a while but now anime like is a lot of serialized anime like a lot of like shows and stuff right. that are like that and i don't know anything about what's current i need to i should maybe catch up but i don't know i just don't have the time but to yeah do all that but my my fandom i decided is uh um the mcu i'm like all okay of, i'm all the movies of, yeah the movies because i love the comic like when i grew up i didn't read the comics but i love the art you know we talked a little bit before stream started of you course. know i'm an art visual artist is a big thing for me so aesthetics and looking at things but i never really read so i love like the x-men i love jim lee i love like some of that stuff when i was growing up but like but um but yeah i didn't get into the stories but then when the mcu came out and how they've just killed it is just like yeah no yeah, yeah they've done wonderful work so and i'm a big fan i'm like it'd be hard pressed for me to uh find faults it, like even some of those shows that some people don't like as much i'm still like yeah i love it i'm, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I, I mean i i get it you know like it when you see things like that come to life and how wonderful they've done with their work it's it's definitely a lot to to take in but you also appreciate the art you know like there's a lot of art that goes into that <laughs> sap says I physically cringe when he says the MCU, but we have fans on says Lord of the Rings is theirs. I don't know. Did you... Yeah. Oh, Finn loves Lord of the Rings, man. He's, he's, he loves it. He loves that stuff. I love it too. Um, yeah. One did... of my favorite movies is one of the Lord of the Rings. Did movies, you, so. have you read the books by chance? No, actually. Um, and so that's one of the things that I really want. I'm reading Dune right now. Okay. So that's one of the things I'm getting through. But after that, Lord of the Rings is definitely one of the movies or the books I want to read for sure. Uh, this is good. This is a good segue to my next question, but I want to hang on here for a second. Um, for sure. So I can't read Lord of the Rings. I, not that I can't. It's really hard for me. All the names. Absolutely. The names just, I'm oh. just like, I can't keep straight. I'm dyslexic. So like trying to, re like, it's like, oh, just too much, too many dialects and too many things. It's like, it's just too much of a struggle. So I never tried to do it. Um, but, uh, and then I've read Dune, but I, I read Dune. I made it through the whole thing. It didn't grab, it didn't like really grab me. Like say like, oh, I love this. I have yeah. a, a friend of mine that's reading like all of them. I see him, he posts on like Instagram. He's like all about the entire Dune series and loves it. But I'm like, hi, ah, it just didn't quite get me. So I'm interested. What, so are you reading it right now? Are you like in the midst of it? Yeah, yeah, I am. I, um, so what, so I saw the movie obviously. Yeah. Um, and the movie was a very artistic, um, in a lot of ways yeah. audibly which i love obviously as a sound designer yeah. um but then also visually like it, it, it was just very interesting but the one thing that really like tugged me was the allusions to to catholicism oh, um yeah, yeah. in within the movie because i grew up catholic okay. um and that I, I, i'm not i'm not gonna say like i'm extremely religious um but i just i found it quite fascinating yeah. all of the allusions between the main character to like Jesus and the main character's mom to Mary and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and I find it super, super interesting. So I'm excited to see how his story plays out. If it's something similar to Jesus or if they kind of flip the switch Homelander style with Superman is like, Oh, he's, the, he's not, he's like the opposite of Jesus, you okay. know, like I, I find it fascinating. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't, I mean, I, I, I'm not the best to get into the nitty gritty, the weeds about Dune and all that. So, uh, <laughs> there's some, there's some things I could do that, but I'm not the. But it's interesting. I was raised Catholic. I don't consider myself really religious anymore. Yeah, I'm yeah. very spiritual, but but yeah, I feel like I don't know. I don't. Know, I feel like we I already feel like there's gonna be a part two to this uh, conversation. Because we've we've already touched on some things that we could probably go much much deeper on. Oh yeah, with like for sure. politics and with like religion and how that plays into our lives and different things like that. But those Absolutely. are two like super polar polarizing things that we don't want to like. What did they say? Things you should never talk about is like religion and and, and ruffle the feathers. Oh oh, you mean like religion, politics, and then there's like one more thing. Yeah, there's what was the last thing? I I think there's one more thing. But anyways, yeah, it's like yeah. never talk about it, like at a family gathering or whatever. Okay. Oh my gosh! So rolling on the favorite. So do you have? Let's start with books since we got weird. That do you have a all time favorite book? It sounds like you like to read. So I read a lot of uh, comic books. Okay. Uh, I do read like normal bookie books, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Frankenstein is a really awesome one that I enjoyed for sure. Um, I actually have a really like cool copy behind me of it. Okay. Um. Uh, but as far as comic books, uh, I would say the, uh, the long Halloween is, is, a is a one a Batman, the long Halloween okay. is one of my favorites. Um, Tim sale, uh, wrote it. 
and, and Jeff Loeb and uh, Tim Sale actually just passed away like a few a few days ago at age sixty six. Oh, wow. oh man! Uh, so that that like hurt my heart a lot because that the Long Halloween I remember reading it um back in the day and wow it it just it sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy. It's been yeah, it's, this whole last couple of years with the deaths of people that we you grown up with and all this kind yeah. of stuff has been intense. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Um. What about so like we talked a little we started this conversation a little bit with um food stuff with Austin barbecues and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you personally have a favorite? Like what's your go to two two questions? Like if you're like if somebody asks you, like, hey, let's go get something, what is your preferred kind of genre, I guess, of food? Or and or if you like to cook at home or you have something you make, like what do you make? Like, do you make anything? Are you a cook? Yeah. So generally if I'm cooking like at home by myself um it's going to be something healthier uh i uh (laughs) try to be a little conscious of that because if i'm home like okay there's no reason for me to make a burger you know yeah um but to the same effect there's always a reason to make a burger (laughs) there is there is there is there is don't get me wrong there absolutely is um but whenever someone's like oh let's go get something immediately i'm like oh let's go get sandy's hamburgers here in austin like okay. that's uh that's probably one of my go-to like hamburgers are always my go-to okay but um is that, yeah, why, is that why the logo your logo oh, is kind of a burger? that is exactly why the logo is a hamburger nice because that's nice. my favorite food <laughs> all right yeah i used to uh, i'm gonna cut you off i used I, no, I, had, good. I had a friend in seattle that we used to our thing was to go around so i'm from seattle i moved to San Diego a while ago oh okay cool um, cool i uh i uh we used to go around and our thing was every time we hung out, we'd go to a different hamburger place and kind of like rate the hamburger. And like, did they have, yeah. do they give you like fries or do they give you like chips or do they give you like, what are like, how do they do it? Like, what is the bun? Like all these kind of things. It's like, what is your, okay, let's break this down then. What is let's your, what is your ideal like hamburger? Like what kind of bun? What kind of, how do you like the, 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 the meat kind of like, how do you, do you like a big sloppy hamburger or do you like it tight and, together like what's your vibe Dude, i my my vibe is is like a, a bit more of a buttery bun okay with um a nice piece of lettuce like lettuce lettuce f- can make or break a hamburger in my opinion oh yeah uh, with some avocado bacon jalapenos oh, mustard bacon bring it up my only give pro- me the bill my only problem with bacon sometimes is if <laughs> it causes me to like st- stop when i'm biting through like some bacon's too oh because you're crushing yeah yeah it's like i I, the bacon needs to be cooked just right so that it doesn't i don't have to like pull it like i don't have to like you know what i mean it's like sometimes that happens but but i tend to just go i'm more of like a traditionalist i guess with a hamburger but i i agree with like i think the right you need the tomato slice and you need the lettuce and you need like certain things that provide the perfect flavor combinations but anyways so sure for sure so I, I think I cut us off of that whole train of thought, but let's run it. We'll just keep going down my list of, of things. Oh, for sure. So we got food. Do you have, I think we kind of cover like, okay, a movie. Do you have a favorite movie or something that you really like, you love to watch? Like, do you have a movie that you've watched multiple times and you're like, any t- you're like, I'll, I'll put this on no matter what. Oh, like, uh, Fellowship of the Ring Okay, uh, is one of those for me. Okay. And uh, Return of the Jedi. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. okay yeah. Then. The original trilogy there you go oh yeah oh yeah dude yeah, yeah. what's your um, so what what where do you where do you fit with like the prequels like what's your you know what's your vibe with the prequels i i despise uh attack of the clones mm. uh i don't like that i feel like as i will watch it though because like you have to if you're watching like from start to finish right yeah um uh, attack of the clones is one of those for me it was just, it felt incredibly lazy it felt very like me- memeable, you know. The whole sand monologue was just yeah. cringe. Phantom Menace, I actually do kind of like it. I like it mostly because of Ray Park, who plays um, uh, uh, oh my god, Darth Maul, the villain, Darth Maul. Yes, yeah. <laughs> my just brain just died for a second. Yeah, it's a, uh, Darth my, Maul. Mine yeah, does that yeah. all the time. I'm surprised that I knew that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh. I love the, the last fight. Uh, obviously, uh, Duel of Fates is great. Yeah. Um, and then Revenge of the Sith, repri- not surprisingly, I guess surprisingly, um, I just love. Like I, I love it like a lot. 
just because of all the the duels, all the things that are happening, the twists that we already knew were coming. Um, yeah, it was. I just like Revenge of the Sith a lot. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm kind of in this. I like Star Wars a lot, and but I've been having a problem with the Disney Plus shows. I just don't feel like they're on the caliber, but of like what else that like i just feel like the mcu shows are much better written much better produced much better visually look like there's just and like some of the things that happen in the disney plus shows i'm just like this is bad this is like bad production why are they allowing this through but then i like remember i feel like something i remember is i feel like star wars is made for kids and a lot of us forget that you know, like we think it should be made for this. It, we've made it so serious because we love it and we want it. We grow. We've grown up with it. We the 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 lore of it all. The, the like everything that comes with it is so we we mine it for all this really stuff. So we get serious about it. So then when we watch the, yeah. then when we watch the shows, we think like, oh, it needs to be as serious as we think it is. But it's really not. It's really this kind of this yeah. like goofy thing. I don't know. Well, I mean, no. I would also from the people who like whether you were like born during the prequel era or the yeah. original era or the sequel era you're growing up with it so i think to an extent they're trying to cater the kids mm -hmm. right who grew up with the sequel era but also trying to cater to the adults who grew up mm -hmm. with the prequel era uh, while also trying to cater to the people who were born with the original trilogy because you know obviously there's a huge chunk of time between the 70s and then in the early 2000s where yeah. the first ones started or the prequel started to come out so like they're trying to to cater like three different age groups three different generations to to try to like do something with yeah. it and on top of that like it's just so hard to please everybody yeah you know yeah like, it's just so hard going back to that original question i asked you about fandoms you know there's a lot of ways that star wars should be my fandom but I just kind of like, I yeah. don't know, because I'm old enough that I've seen every single original release in the theater, you know? So it's mm -hmm. like from the beginning, I mean, you know, like back in the day, movies used to be in the theater for a really long time, not like they are yeah. now. And so yeah, I saw yeah, the yeah. original movie in the theater, like, and it was like, because it was like, but I, you know, anyways, that's another no, story. Yeah. But um, okay, okay. <laughs> I want to jump. I feel like I'm getting ready to start talking about the youtube kind of thing that we're getting into uh, yeah like why basically i just want to i just want to find out like what is it that you are trying like what got you started what got you interested in wanting to be a streamer wanting to do youtube give me the history give me like give me the, the lore the lou dog history of youtube like who insp what inspired you why do you want to start what has changed in this little beginning like i don't know how early you are with the whole journey, if you tried something before, if you started a new channel, like what, like what's the whole thing? Like, or is this your first channel and you're just kind of going at like, yeah. what's so like, like give me, break there, it down for us. There's been iterations okay. and like, I think all the people who are part of the community who are here in the chat, like know most of it. Okay. Um, I don't know any of I it. So <laughs> break it down for me. Break it down. Absolutely. For me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I was, uh, when I was a kid and I was a teenager, um, I had a lot of uh, deaths happen in my life mm. um, from like 13 years old to now, you know, I, I was very young when a lot of important people in my life passed away. And so I had to kind of take up a mantle that it, it's kind of hard for a 13 year old to, to take up. And as a result, I uh, started to find things that made me happy to help soften the blow of certain things and to help take my mind off of things which you already heard one of those which is comic books and the other thing was watching um content creators right so my best friend he introduced me to an an animation series called uh, battlefield friends um and the people who made battlefield friends and i love this animation to this day are uh now called neves gaming and so neves gaming makes these uh cinematic gameplay videos that i just adore right and it's like tv shows shot outside there's different shots like it's just really cool very creative way of doing things there's sound design and the whole like it's a production almost um and it's great and it may it helped me like forget my troubles it helped me kind of focus on something new and uh so they are huge influences on me um in addition to that i used to watch this other channel from rooster teeth which is based in austin by the way um uh called cow chop so there's this channel called cow chop they're a little more gritty a little more like uh rough and tumble uh their channel ended which hurt <laughs> yeah. 
but you know the camaraderie they had the the fun that they put into making their content like really spoke to me there's this one more person who is from Caltrop who is, does things on his own now his name is Uber Astronova and he actually was uh had a couple million subscribers before he he did stuff with Caltrop um and just watching him play his stuff and have fun and just you know that sort of, again helped me take my mind off of things and so I sat and thought about my life and kind of the things that I want to do moving forward and I, I realized that I wanted to do the things that uh that they did for me right which was help and be there uh not only because I, they like the job right or they have fun gaming or they have fun doing whatever but because they get to but because then you influence people to 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 realize like hey there's things in life that are are great and they're mm-hmm. fun and these are things you can look forward to like right like as a result like them playing certain games i'm like oh i want to play that game and that game like would breathe new life into me right and like help me move forward a little bit um so all that started happened for me in 2017 with the with this channel still it wasn't called the anger belly it was actually called louie with a period mm-hmm. <laughs> i had no idea what i wanted to do i was like do i try to make vlogs do i try to like make gameplay videos i tried both um, and then initially, like, I was just trying to figure it out. And then I went to college. And in the middle of college, I was like, you know what? Quarantine hit. I'm just going to be home. I'm going to, and all through this time, I'm trying to edit. I'm trying to figure out how to use Premiere Pro. I'm trying to figure out how to use Photoshop, teaching myself things. And um, I'm like, well, none of it's working. Let's try Twitch. I went to Twitch. And actually, Breath of the Wild was a game I played 80 hours fully on Twitch. Uh, it pushed me through to affiliate. Okay. Um, which was great and i i was so excited because i was like oh my god like I, you know i can make money playing video games now like that's crazy um and, and i got a lot of nice feedback a lot of nice people coming and talking to me and having fun um and i it just made me feel good to play something fun but also give people the, the things that i want to give to them right which are entertainment and an escape um but also a reminder that like, hey, this is real life, right? But like, just come sit with me for a couple of hours, and and, and after that, go back to whatever you got to figure out, like you know. But we're here, um, and then I played a bunch of horror games, and then like at some point, like uh, during like uh, for a whole year, I never, I or not even a whole year, it was more like six to four months, I didn't gain a single follower on Twitch, yeah. um. So like, it, it it was just getting like it was getting a lot, man. I was like, I can't continue i need to put my like you win some you lose you lose some right yeah i need to put my time and energy into things that are in term of in terms of the angry belly right that are going to help propel me forward right to continue this this pursuit of of helping people um and doing the things that i want to do uh so i moved to youtube i was like i have a good friend the greatest who has uh almost three thousand subscribers and he plays warzone um, I saw his success on there and I kind of asked him for some advice and uh, he gave it to me and he, he was very, he's very awesome. We were neighbors actually for like our whole time in school. And um, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to try YouTube and see how it goes. And looking at the numbers, I did, I used to do streams like once a week on YouTube, seeing that the game that, that got the most views and got the most likes is it was Splatoon. I'm like, well, I love Splatoon. Let's see how this goes. And so mm-hmm. fast forward six months and here we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's, there's a lot in there that, I want to break down a little bit more. Um, I'll start with the the last thing because and because I've probably forgotten the stuff that I the other thing. <laughs> I need to write down more what, while I said you're a talking. Lot. Yeah, I said a lot. No, it's all good. Um, so you said, uh, but so it sounds like so what I resonate with at the end there. So for me, streaming, it's the streaming that I like versus the content. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I just love. That's why I like doing this interview, playing Splatoon playing other games, making my art is really just a vehicle for me to perform. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you because I caught one of your streams the other day. The one I, I jumped in and was chatting with you right. a little bit. And you made a comment um, about like, what can you do as like basically an entertainer to entertain not, and may, I don't know if this is the way you phrase it, but this has come up in other pockets of, watching youtube and watching this kind of idea of being Mm -hmm. a streamer you don't have to be the best it's like i think sometimes we get caught up in this idea like i need to be the best player of this game in order for anybody to care but it's like 
you know, there's there's that little voice in our heads, but then there's also this voice, or, and you hear like, no, you don't. You just got to be entertaining, and it's like, so oh, yeah. it's like, how are you? And this could lead into other conversations, but how are you trying to build? Like, what is it that you believe brings entertainment to people? Like, what it is that what have you started to to, to kind of figure out some things that you believe is what you need to share within your streams to make them the best they can be? Yeah, um, I feel like there's a lot of basics, right? And the basics being like high energy. Well, because well, I, well, really, actually, the first thing is need, you need to figure out what brings people in for you. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So, like for example, my friend, the greatest, he is insanely good at Warzone. Okay. Like he he does he's really really good at the game, um, and he also says a lot of funny things. Like he has a lot of like things here and there he'll say, and it's just funny you know yeah um so he but he does market his his uh his viewership to look at this cool kill i got and and, and look how good i am yeah i know myself <laughs> i'm not good at any games like i'm not i love playing games right but i'm i'm not good like i'm never gonna be division one comp in splatoon 2 like ever <laughs> And I've un I've understood that about myself. I think also the viewership that's here, who's a part of the community, also knows that I am not good at the game. But what I am good at is 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 talking. I'm good at making people laugh. I'm good at and saying dumb things and having dumb reactions to get people to giggle, mm -hmm. right? So it's, and then it becomes an, an an endearing factor to where people are like, oh, this guy's not good at the game, but he knows it and he's clowning on himself for it. Yeah. But he's also kind of funny and creative. And so I think that's the part that pulls people in because as I've been watching uh, Splatoon to uh, other like, YouTubers or Splatoobers, right? Yeah. Um, I see a lot of their content being like, oh, hey, and this, there's nothing wrong with this, right? Yeah, yeah. Being like, oh, here are my thoughts about Splatoon or here, here's how I use uh, the Splatling gun or this is how I use the ends app or whatever. And I am never, yeah, never gonna make a video like that yeah <laughs> because i, I just I, I don't i can't like i my brain doesn't like i'm not good at the game but what i am gonna make and here's here's a bit of a spoiler for you guys but what i'm gonna make is is a funny video on how not to play sports <laughs> right like that so like i'm understanding that my niche of, of people coming in are people who are are, are laughing at the things that i'm doing yeah. and laughing at the things that that i'm creating um rather than coming in for for triples although i do put a lot of shorts out there where i'm i'm doing triples but that short is more based off of my reaction after the triple you know okay like, like oh cool i got a triple but here's my funny reaction saying things you know afterwards a you know what triple what i don't even know what a tri triple kill what is it like a triple kill in yeah. splatoon okay. yeah 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 yeah. you get yeah, three yeah, in yeah. a row or that's something what, yeah yeah that's right, what I mean. like because you know how it like pops up and it just like fills yeah. your screen a little uh, bit okay yeah. okay one time so like this was before i was streaming and then uh -huh. i don't know it was what version of the game it was but i you know this probably people get this sometimes and I, but i'm not i'm i'm still getting better like i'm trying to oh, yeah. get kills like i want to get more kills it's like my my goal is to get more kills but, but absolutely but i'm yeah. more of a painter at this point you know I, I like i'll get lots of paint <laughs> but i'm not like i'm not getting but i'm i'm trying to find but anyways back in a, a few like a while ago i was just playing and I had a splashdown that got their whole team at once. And, oh, I, nice. and I was like freaking out. I like recorded it, shared it on social. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> you know, like... Yeah, yeah. I have uh, I think I've only gotten ever one quad kill. Yeah. Um, a four piece. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it, but like it's very satisfying. Yeah. But the thing is that I don't get them often. Yeah. I have to be playing not against my community yeah. to do well <laughs> yeah. because I have a lot of people <laughs> yeah, exactly. who are prestige level. Yeah. And not that that means that they're um, they're better than me, but for the most part, they are going to be better than me. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. And they just completely destroy me like all the time, and I'm totally fine with it. Yeah. Um. But if I want those kinds of shorts, I have to go play ranked, not with them. Yeah. <laughs> because then I'm playing people in my like yeah. threshold of of skill, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, oh, so many questions. Um. Oh, well, so another thing about my show is I jump around like we'll come no, back yeah, to things. That's fine. I want to jump. Absolutely. I want to jump in. Keeping on this idea of your belief of what you present 
um, we'll talk more about spot two in, in, a, in a little bit, I'm sure. But but um, yeah. this is kind of more of a general, still the, still the general conversation of being a YouTuber, being a streamer. So you did mention that you you, you hung out on Twitch for a while. Um, yeah. You're you're now on YouTube. Um, there's a couple of questions I want to ask around that. Like, have you thought of, or do you? What's your take on dual dual streaming? Like, so right now I'm doing both. I go YouTube and Twitch, and I've I've had yeah. the same experience. Like. I'm almost like I said this on my stream the other day. It's like, why am I bothering with Twitch? It's like nothing has happened over there. And I've been streaming over there every stream pretty much for a year. Um, all my game streams and nothing is there's like there seems to be no discovery over there or, or something like to happen. Whereas YouTube, it feels like there's more possible discovery that happens for the yeah. viewer. So I don't know. I wanted to get your play on that. Like, what do you why do you think you stalled out with Twitch? You know, like. What do you think it is, or what do you know? Maybe you've learned by reading or, or hearing other streamers. Yeah, so I've I've talked about this a little bit, but I, I I do a lot of research and I watch a lot of streams, kind of you know like, and I made this analogy at one point, but I, I sit and watch tape like like yeah. I'm like I'm a basketball player, right? Like yeah. watching, seeing what I do wrong, what I do right, what I could do less and more of that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so going back and seeing myself. There are there were definitely things about it that I could have fixed, okay, um, and been better about. But the biggest thing that I've realized watching other people reading things about Twitch, reading things is that Twitch itself caters to you if you have grown bigger somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you need to grow bigger on TikTok yeah. or Instagram yeah. or wherever to to garner an audience on Twitch. So then the more people you have watching, the more people the more the more you move up in that specific game category, right? Yeah. So if you're if you're playing Warzone, one of the biggest games out there right now, if you're playing Warzone and you have a hundred thousand TikTok followers and that say now you have five thousand followers on Twitch as a result of TikTok, and you have a concurrent twenty viewers, you're already up there way more than the person who just started on Twitch yeah. who has n not grown bigger anywhere else. Yeah. You know, a, a, and so that's something that I came to realize. I wasn't big anywhere. I'm I'm still not big, obviously, but like, yeah. Now that I've gone back to start to, to stream on Twitch, I stream on Twitch once a week at some point during the week, okay. uh, whenever I have time. Um, but the reason that I started moving back to Twitch is because, first of all, I'm I'm affiliated, right? So I yeah. can make money, right? Yeah. That's not the the biggest contributing factor, but it is a factor. I I, I lied to myself if it wasn't. Um, oh. but. The reason I started doing that is because on the opposite end of the spectrum, YouTube doesn't offer a lot of leeway for the things you actually you want to play a little bit more of or mm. play something else, right? So if I play Splatoon, I can't go play Battlefield on YouTube because it it, it the analytics are gonna the the algorithm's gonna kill me, <laughs> right? The algorithm is like nah, like we don't want that. You're you're in Splatoon, you're not gonna get a lot of viewership from this. And also all my computers com uh, communities Nintendo esque, right? Yeah. Um. But if I go to Twitch, I can play Battlefield. And because some of the people here, and I'm saying Battlefield specifically, I haven't actually played Battlefield on on, on uh, Twitch. But um, because some of the people here are like, oh, we also like Battlefield, but you don't we you don't play it on this. But if you play it on Twitch, I'll go play it with you. So an actual example I should have used is Minecraft. Um, so a lot of my community is like, oh, let's play Minecraft, let's play Minecraft. And I was like, I, I, I don't feel comfortable doing that yet on, on YouTube because of growth, analytics, whatever. Hmm. And then I was like, well, let's just do it on Twitch, right? Yeah. So we got a, a solid six, seven of you guys that want to watch me play this on Twitch. Yeah. Let's do it. And so I made a realm or whatever. And now we now our, our Minecraft stream on Twitch was, was great. It was better than most of my other streams on Twitch. Yeah. Like seven concurrent viewers, which is mm. less, like a lot less than YouTube. But as you know, we're uh, because I was able to grow here a little bit. I I, I was able to bring some people over to Twitch and, yeah. and get ad revenue and get whatever. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if I'm. I'm probably in denial, but <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I haven't been convinced yet that totally what you just played it played like uh, uh laid out for the YouTube scenario mm -hmm. is as accurate as a lot of people think it is. Um. Mm -hmm. Because like for me. I do a lot of random stuff and I get it all the time. My viewers are like, you should only do one thing. It'll be better for your algorithm and all this stuff. And I'm like, Hey, I don't want to do that. So I'm fucking, no, yeah. you know, like, whatever. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, you do what you want to but do. it may be right. And I think, so obviously this is a big, big rabbit hole we could go down with, 
the whole thing. Yes, oh, for sure. I do believe if you have very, very specific content, um, it does help in some ways for sure. Like you're always yeah. you are the known source for this type of content. However, I don't think it necessarily inhibits you as much as people think it does if you mix your content up. Because, like, for me, it's, like, my most viewed video on my channel is a, is a workout video, and I never do that stuff. And it's constantly getting views. So it's, like, it's not, like... YouTube saying, well, he only does this, he doesn't do this, so we're not, we're going to suppress it or anything, because it's obvious, it's getting viewed, it's like always in my top viewed videos all the time, and it's like something, I did it years ago, it's like, I did it like a couple of years, and it's still getting my most views, so it's like, it's just about making good content, I think it really boils down to making good content, Yeah. so it's yeah, like, I, you can, I can agree with that, yeah. you can mix up more than I think you, but I don't know, I don't know for a fact, obviously, but I just feel like there's more leeway than a lot of creators give themselves for changing the content. Cause I believe it's more about being transparent with your audience. So if you're yeah. saying like, Hey, yeah. this, this is not going to be only Splatoon. We're going to play Minecraft. And I see, actually see a lot of gamers. That's a, that's a common double. It seems Splatoon and Minecraft and they, yeah, and, yeah. and they'll do it on the same stream. Even they'll be like, we're going to start with Splatoon and go to Minecraft or something, which I don't do that. I keep my stream right. one, one, game i i'm i'm this i'm the same way my i have adhd so like my brain needs to have the the one thing to fixate on at a time most of the time (laughs) Mm. um no i hear everything you're saying and and so like for me i i i've done some fully edited gameplay that that didn't do so hot yeah um it's just and so with all with all my editing skills that i have and my photoshop skills it's it, it seems to me that like for now that this is this is what i have to do not necessarily what i, what I want to do and it's so like i've said this before and, and i think you said this earlier too is like you're you're doing what you're doing as a vehicle to get somewhere else mm-hmm. and that's exactly what i'm doing at some point i am going to divert a little bit more off of splatoon um but to the same effect like i i think i'm i, I want to i do want to scratch an itch yeah. right which would be the, the fully edited videos okay but also yeah. like i have I have like no time. Yeah, no, <laughs> so I, I, yeah. Like, you know, so I have to like because I just got. I think I said this earlier, but I just got my degree uh, like a year ago, and okay. now I have a full time job, which is crazy. But like, you know, so now I'm I'm trying to like be good there too, and give them my all while also giving my all here. So I yeah. have to like also like divert, divert, um, divide my time wisely so that I'm giving each thing three things that I'm doing, um as much as i can give them yeah yeah no i feel that i mean i so much so much of that is is uh i feel it too um in a lot of ways and okay i wanted to jump into another so we're staying on this streaming kind of concept and like there's two questions i wanted to ask um one was we brought up earlier but the first one, based on this cup. So we're getting to this cup in a second. Breath I've, of the Wild, man. I have the, yeah. this Zelda Breath of the Wild cup, which we'll get to in a second. But um, it's a, there's a specific question around that. But first question is kind of based on, like you said, um, you like you watch tape, right? You watch yourself. But yeah. also, I mean, you're probably, I don't know, kind of checking out what other people are doing and seeing what you said. Yeah. And um, so what, is, what are some things like for yourself like what? Okay, I'm gonna ask it very more specifically. I've been watching a lot of Splatoon streamers li- lately. There's yeah. there's Splatoon streamers that do no video at all, no just voice and game. Yeah, yeah. There's Splatoon streamers that do the I can't remember what they're called, but the little like a little oh. char- character. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That like reacts. It's like a react. Yeah. What is that term? There's a term. I can't it's remember. um. It's not PNG I, or something, or is it like? No, it's uh. My God, I know the name of it, and I can't remember. Maybe somebody in the favorite... ch- chat knows. I don't know, but uh, uh the virtual. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the little yes. character. There's a there's a ver- VTubers. That's what the Finder said. It's VTubers. VTubers. Yeah. Okay. There's another term that I I heard as well. But okay, the VTubers. But then there's also there's what like um streamers like us that use the little picture in picture um and then there's the green screen people as well so like yeah. what what's your take and and i'll get i'm gonna like give yourself the liberty to say what you like and don't like without it being like we're not saying that they're doing it wrong we're just saying oh, yeah. preference yeah. wise like what is it that you think works better and why and why did you choose to do picture in picture versus other things 
So the the so I used to be a green screen person uh, when I was on Twitch, um, in an effort to look more professional, right? Uh, and the reason I stopped doing that is because I got lazy, and I wanted I I didn't want to put this thing up anymore. Like I had to put I don't have like I you know in my my room is my workspace. Okay. It took up a lot of space, and having to set up and and, and sit down the whole thing was just got kind of annoying, and it sure, wasn't really yeah. helping because obviously I wasn't having growth on Twitch anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the reason why I used face, um, instead of not face, I guess, is because I realized that I want to have a personal connection with everybody that I can have as much as I can have it. Yeah, yeah. Um, because one of the things I think I'm good at, and I've heard I'm good at is is doing that very thing and, and being, um, uh, what's the word like authentic yeah right not to say that you can't be authentic just voiceover or vtuber wise because if you can be authentic those ways killing the game yeah. like you're doing great because i i have a lot of facial reactions to everything that um i think help with the whole like watching me despite the fact that i'm not good um <laughs> at the game uh so that's the reason i do it just to have more personal connections with everybody who comes into the stream okay. people who help um like my moderators and, and my game maker finn my moderator Saf, my, my moderator zef like the you know having this face-to-face connection um me to them is yeah. is what's super important to me yeah yeah no i so i'm gonna just lay down my preference i guess oh yeah please well. do i was actually gonna ask you um so <laughs> i prefer the picture in picture and i actually don't think this is my take, and I can see this is arguable, arguable, whatever. I don't think green screen looks more professional. I think it looks worse, to be honest. Well, well yeah, yeah. And so that was my attempt at it, right? <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> that was my attempt. I think it's just like get, like people get excited about it, but I understand sometimes there's backgrounds that you don't maybe you haven't you don't feel comfortable like where you're streaming, so you want to yeah, yeah, you want to yeah, hide. And your, that's totally acceptable. Yeah. yeah. And which is something we had to deal with with Zoom, like going to school over Zoom and different things. Like a lot of people yeah. were just uncomfortable sharing what was going on around them. So they'd have different things to hide that either just not showing anything. But anyways, so and I also like I think the, having the picture in picture gives you the chance to share more of your personality as a streamer. Be- oh, yeah. Because you, sure. what you put around the background, like I love the fact that I'm not using any RGB, any lights, anything like that. And I'm showing my arts and my craziness. And I think it's like, you know, n- nobody, I guarantee nobody else has a background like this. And it's authentic and real. So it's like, yeah. that's why I like like to share, share that. I don't know. That's just my vibes. And then like, yeah, I don't know. There's other stuff we could go down the rabbit hole with. But I'm just, I just feel like you're it's you should show your face like whenever i see a streamer that's not showing their face i'm just like man not i'm out i'm out (laughs) like yeah it's kind of hard to connect with them like that in in my opinion of course and like the same thing you know i have this one piece stuff back here and this Mm -hmm. game of thrones stuff and whatever and the amount of people that come in are like oh my god you like one piece too have you read blah 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 blah." and then we have a little conversation about it and then all of a sudden my sub count goes up like that's that's nice yeah um, for me it's like i love it when people do start to look in the background like what is that? Did you make that? Like, what's going mm-hmm. on? And it's like, oh yeah, I'm an artist, and it gives me a chance to. Because honestly, if I'm honest about, super honest, one of my hopes is like, like if I could get away with doing art streams 100% of the time, all the time, I would feel very good about that. But I don't get nearly the amount of like engagement that I do there with game streaming. But yeah. I've gotten my game stream community to come to my art stream stuff, and so it's like you know, getting, and so I'm using like the whole thing as a place to kind of share everything. Um, so I wanted to get to this mug. Oh idea. yeah. So basically, so this is a breath of the wild Zelda mug that my son gave me and I use it every time I stream gaming, especially, but almost every Absolutely. stream. And it's kind of my like super, not so su- I wouldn't necessarily say it's a superstition, but it's my like thing that like, if I'm going to be drinking something, I'm going to be using this mug. So I wanted to ask you, is there anything like you feel off about if you don't have it set up the right when you're about to start a stream if your mic isn't the right spot or if you're something's off are you do you does it nag at you the entire time until you fix it or do you have any yeah. any of those kind of things yeah so i um one of the things it, and i get clowned about it a little bit 
is whenever I'm streaming or working at this desk right here, I need to have my shoes on. Okay. Yeah. I need to have my shoes on. Um, socks and shoes, the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Because I'm one of those people who needs, like, I just need a strong base. Yeah, yeah. To keep me grounded. Because um, when I have the shoes on, when I have the boots on, whatever, it makes me feel like I'm working. Like, mm -hmm. I'm working right now. If I take off my shoes, I'm falling asleep. Yeah. Period. <laughs> like that's just the way i like i i work so much yeah. that when i sit on the couch i just knock out yeah like i i it, it's it's a bit of an issue on my on my end because i obviously work too much but like yeah, be careful the shoes i need the shoes i need the shoes on mm -hmm. the shoes stay on yeah be uh, but yeah that is my that is my one thing <laughs> i feel that so much i'm the same way like i i cannot feel productive if i don't have my shoes on like yeah. i just feel like you know, some people can do whatever with without their shoes. But for me, it's like I need it makes me feel like I'm the type that I need to be fully dressed, even if I'm home. You know, a lot of people oh, will yeah. just wear like their pajamas or whatever their whole day if they don't have to leave and still do work or something. I'm like, I need to be fully dressed, shoes on, working, doing creative stuff, whatever it is, streaming. Yeah. Same way. Same. Way. I yeah. feel that yeah. so much. I wanted to So you said you work too much. Like, be careful. You know, I burnt, yeah. I've burnt myself yeah. out, and it's and it's it sucks. It's once you start to hit yeah. burnout, once you start to hit burnout, like for me, I'll just say for me, when I started to hit burnout, my threshold to get hit burnout again gets smaller and smaller. So make sure that you're, I mean, you're young still, and you've got probably a lot of energy still, and and in whatever, but um, just give yourself those opportunities to take days off, and just do nothing, yeah. whatever it is um just be very conscious about how hard you're trying to work because i was that same way i would like go to work come home start doing my youtube and stuff and i was just like wall to wall working in some capacity for like multiple years like i'd say like five six years in a row i was just like grinding yeah and it yeah it, it, it f me up basically so it's like yeah be careful be careful dude i my my mom my girlfriend my everybody in my life is like you need to chill mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes like yeah. and and i listen yeah. i reluctantly listen i'll reluctantly be like all right i'll let's just watch this i yeah. guess yeah <laughs> No, I feel you. It's hard for us creative types that yeah. we want to, we keep going. We want, I personally feel guilty if I'm not working, you know, if I, I kind of feel the same way. Yeah. Know, so it's like allowing, I think I've had to process that sit with myself and so, and allow myself, no, I, I, I'm okay. Just like work through that guilty feeling and go like, I'm just going to veg out, watch this show for a while, not work yeah. today, give myself a day off. Um, I'm, it's easier for me now because I've, burnout so i know that feeling and that's way worse like when you can't function you're like oh, you're like anxiety attacks all this kind of crazy stuff so yeah. just uh you know just be you know i'm here like now that we know each other if you need somebody oh, that dude. if you need absolutely some, if you need somebody that relates to what you're going through uh, and you need somebody to talk to, just reach out. I'll I'll be here. I'm here for you, bro. So dude, um I thank you for that. Yeah. I, I'll be here for you too. <laughs> Cheers to I that. mean, I don't have quite as much experience, but you know, hey. Hey, we're all in the <laughs> same we're all in the same boat. Um so we're about at their hour. How are you doing with time? Do you have I'm good. Okay, so yeah, I'm I, good. I won't go too much longer, but I have some more questions I wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. Um basically like I wanna let's start with this goals idea with like your YouTube stuff, like Mm -hmm. you what are you hoping like how what are you hoping will happen and how do you think you're able to achieve like what are the steps you're taking to achieve it like obviously i, I imagine you want to get to that thousand sub mark so you can kind of monetize oh, your yeah. channel and stuff and mm -hmm. like so what other kind of do you have any like goals for your streaming kind of uh, career and just overall creative career yeah i um you know, it's hard to see what the future is going to be, right? Uh, but one of the things that I've talked about is like, yeah, for sure, I want to get monetized first yeah. um, before I do anything else. But from there, I want to have like merch, right? Like I want to have some stickers. I want to yeah. have like, you know, maybe down the line some shirts or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. the case is. Um, diversify my um, source of income, sure. right? Yeah. If, um, if, if, I'm doing, if I'm going that route. Yeah. Um, but the my ultimate goal and my ultimate I think thing I I would love to achieve is to have the ability to 
because I'm in theater, right? Yeah. Uh, plays and musical, that sort of thing. And I love sound designing a lot. Like it scratches an itch for me like no other. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd love to be able to be like, like this is what I'm doing mo- full time at some point, right? Um, although I love the job I'm doing now. I'm a scenic carpenter. I make, I build and weld and I love it. Um, but if we're talking streaming specifically, like if that, if this does work out, then maybe down the line, I will do this full time and then take, and then sound design when I want to, how I want to, where I want to, mm-hmm. you know, uh, cause it, 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 it used this as an avenue financially to, to, to sound design a little bit more mm-hmm. and to do that a little bit more. And cause a theater is never going to leave my life like, ever. Um, and um, as much as I love what I'm doing now, I also realize that when I'm 40 years old, I probably can't weld in 100 degree weather for eight hours. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it, it's going to get to a certain point where I'm like, all right, I can't do this as much as I used to. Um, and so I'm kind of working in the pursuit of that financially. Yeah. But overall arching goal is I want to reach as much people as possible to show these people that you can do the, You can achieve your dreams. You can also have an escape. Mm-hmm. There are things in life that are, are, are awesome. And there are awesome people out there, Yeah. you know, and, and whether it be me to them or, or them to each other. Right. And, and that makes me happy to have people like, Oh, Hey, like, like we have Finn, Saf, and Solid um, in in the chat, and, and they all talk and know each other. I know Finn and, and, and Solid have been playing Minecraft on the Angry Belly Realm for the past few days. And that makes me happy because, like, oh, I got y'all introduced. Like, now y'all are just playing Minecraft for eight hours straight. Like, it's amazing, mm-hmm. you know? So that that is, is what I'm working towards. Yeah, so I should have said this at the beginning, but if anybody's watching this that's uh... – new to this yeah i mean it's going to be living on youtube now so hopefully people will watch it when they yeah. have time you know kick down those subs for for angry belly for uh oh, for, for lou dog and um you know hopefully me too but um yeah let's grow let's i mean i don't know one of the things i tell people all the time is well let's talk about this because we brought it up before yeah um before the stream started was like you know subbing to a channel does nothing to them it's only for the creator you know, yeah. it's like has nothing. It doesn't affect their viewing of whatever. They have to actually watch the videos for their personal algorithms to get changed. So subbing is all just support for somebody. So like kick down those, like kick down way more subs to people than you you could. But also as a content creator, our sub counts also mean nothing to us in a lot of ways. No. So I wanted to get your take on some of that as well. Like we. You did bring up before we started streaming, like you have some thoughts on that kind of concept. Like, what is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Break it down. So, like, I I understand that like the number matters to a lot of people, and it matters to me too to an extent because it's like, oh, you liked me enough to help me out and grow that number for me. Yeah. Um. In addition to that, though, after the one thousand mark monetization wise it doesn't matter because youtube cares about watch time Mm -hmm. you know so it's like well i could have and i know this will probably never happen because that's not how youtube works i could have only a thousand subs for the rest of my youtube career but be making bank Mm -hmm. because i have a lot of people watching uh, you know a thousand people watching my stream every time i stream yeah and so after that 1000 mark hits monetization wise it doesn't matter yeah but what i will say is that it's nice to be a part of something Mm -hmm. right for the people subbing to be a part of something yeah so like i've been telling everybody and this is a bit of a a promo but i have uh, when i hit 400 subs it was um we're doing a splatoon 2 tournament okay cool so it's like now that we've hit 400 i'm like well now you can now we're doing this tournament because you subbed like you're a part of this you made this happen so you know go to the link and you know and then sign up for the for the yeah the tournament (laughs) you know and that's uh that's kind of my my take on it so it's it's an opportunity for me to grow but i think also i'm trying to make it so that they feel like they're a part of something yeah right hitting those goals yeah i saw this tiktok the other day that i admit i do i did like a stitch for with because they were talking about you know, you don't need a lot of subscribers to go full time on YouTube because it's basically the same thing you just said. It's like if you're yeah. getting watched 
that that's what matters for like the internal YouTube, like ad revenue and all this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But what, and then you know this, but I'm just speaking this because I feel like it, but it's like what, what subs do a couple of things for me personally, it's just like, makes me feel good. You know, it's like, Oh, I'm oh getting, yeah. I'm getting subs. For I'm sure. like, I'm, it makes me feel good. And I like that feeling. Um, and it also helps like this term called social proof. You know, there's mm -hmm. like, when if an external ad person external like somebody wants to support your channel if they see you have a high sub count they're more likely to think to, that yeah. you know that something's going on for you i'm um, hopefully to do, do the research and look into your view counts and other things but it's that gateway it's like oh that first thing on your page right under your screen name how many subscribers you have if that's a decent number that helps the overall thing so it's like you're helping the creator if you're subbing to channels because it's visually it's that social proof kind of idea that makes it all like, yeah oh everybody likes this person so i'm gonna like them too yeah kind of kind of vibes like that so i have this question I, I'm, I'm building up this list I've, as my this is probably something that i'll do like at the beginning of my interviews but mm -hmm. it's like would you rathers and somebody asked me in my stream the other day like i'm changing what they asked me but they asked me would you rather have ten thousand dollars or a hundred thousand subscribers but i'm gonna change it because i was that for me that was a no-brainer it was like subscribers all the way, but like, oh yeah. But if you went, if you had a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred thousand subscribers, what like, where would you like? I still know what I would answer, but I wanted to see: Would you rather hundred thousand dollars right now, or a hundred thousand subscribers right now? What would you want? These questions hurt for yeah. me. <laughs> uh, I don't want anything given to me. Like, I don't want. I want to be able to work for the money. What? But I also want to be able. I also want to be able to work for the subscribers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'd probably pick the lesser of the two and go with the subscribers. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I'll need to rephrase how I say it. It's not like genuine subscribers, right? They are actually followers. Like it's like something happened that like you worked for it, you earned it, you got it. But it's like these two, oh. you know, it's not necessarily oh. like, because the one thing, but the caveat that I always tell, like some of my streamers are like, I'm going to start a bunch of alts and, and get you to that. I'm like, don't do that, please. Do I, not. I've done the same exact thing. Yeah, don't, I've done the same exact thing. I don't want, but I don't want empty calories. I, I don't want like accounts yeah. that don't matter. I want one to one. I want to know that that per, that subscriber is somebody potentially genuine. Watching. Genuine. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, absolutely. So yeah, I would go subscribers too all every day. Um, yeah. Just because, well, a my bucket list is to get the first plaque. You know, I'm like, I want that hundred thousand <laughs> subscriber plaque so bad. But um, dude, every time I look at, at your sub count, you're going up. So I mean, hey, it's, it, I feel like it might be, it might, it's, it's, a, it's a climb, but <laughs> I think you'll get there. Maybe I don't know, man. It feels, it's a struggle, man. As you know, as you know, it's like yeah. it feels like I'm just like, because oh. I don't know for myself, I feel. I feel like I'm just right on the verge. I'm like right on the cusp. It's like, yeah, it just feels that way so much. Like all my platforms, like TikTok and other things. It's like, it's just like, cause going back to that algorithm kind of idea that you were saying, um, we're talking about earlier with YouTube. It's like, we're so, I think personally, my personal feeling of the algorithm is there's the content you make that will be more likely to get into the feed but there's also the decision by YouTube to flip that toggle, that switch for you. It's like sometimes that perfect piece of content won't get pushed because YouTube just doesn't push it or whoever, whoever the platform is just doesn't push it for some reason. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah. cause I've experienced that a little with like YouTube stories. Um, so let's talk about yeah. talk if, if anything there inspired you, but I want to talk to you a little bit about what other, platforms like what are you doing outside of youtube with other platforms to help drive content like how do you use are you doing yeah. that or what what's your plans in that area so i obviously I, I talked about this earlier but twitch i am using i am using twitch right now yeah once a week uh we've had like a few people from twitch come over to youtube and vice versa obviously so that's nice that they're kind of feeding into each other a little bit um, but in addition to that, I post the, uh, the shorts on TikTok too. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, I think we actually, yesterday we just hit 60 followers on TikTok. So that's really nice. Um, in addition to that, uh, I've been posting them here and there on Facebook. Um, Facebook isn't really doing too hot, uh, but still, you know, 
figured I'd give it a shot and see how it goes. Yeah. What's your take on – so you're not dual streaming right now. No. But what's your take on Facebook as a gaming platform? Yeah, there's a the the thing that I've seen happen is like it's trying to to come up. Yeah. Right? It's trying to to become one of the premier gaming platforms. Um which I applaud for so that applaud uh but they're pouring a lot of money into it is from what I could tell, which is very nice for the people who are creating. But also there's a lot of bad stigma around uh, uh what's his name mark zuckerberg right yeah to where like i know a lot of people don't necessarily love the guy and so i feel like to an extent that puts a a bit of a downer yeah on facebook as a whole um i do see that that there is a untapped gold mine there to an extent mm. um so i i do know of plenty of people who have streamed on their post videos and have been quite successful yeah. so that's that is the 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 factor that makes me want to put more stuff on there, but also looking at the things that are on Facebook, I don't see a lot of Splatoon. Oh yeah. Um, on Facebook, so it's one of those things too. Is like, all right, well, I'm gonna try it out, see how it goes, and 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 we you know when you put the hashtag and you put Splatoon two, whatever. Yeah. It'll it doesn't say that a lot of people have used the said hashtag. Yeah. So I'm like, well, is this a good investment for me as long as I'm playing Splatoon two specifically, right? Yeah. So. I think <clears throat> so. I'm gonna ask a couple couple more questions, but I want to kind of wrap it up. I definitely feel like we could do we could definitely do a part two to this. There's so much more that we could talk about. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, um. Yeah. We'll 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 keep in touch for sure. Do this thing. I wanted to find out like what do you feel. So part of why I started streaming Splatoon, I I like the game. I was looking for a second game game to, to stream because i started with a mobile game that i was streaming right right but i was like i need something else and people were like you should stream more stuff i tried other things and nobody cared um mm -hmm. I, I i actually tried splatoon a couple of times and it got zero views but then i did this one it just like clicked and it was awesome i did this one with my son and we did a dual stream with both our we had two videos of splatoon oh going that's on. fun it was so awesome yeah, that's cool and um, that's cool man. unfortunately we haven't been able to do that again but it like it kickstarted it, so now I'm splat. I'm streaming Splatoon more often, and but now knowing that Splatoon three is coming, I was like, okay, I'm hoping that there'll be this kind of surge of players that'll be looking yeah. for content and looking for streams and looking for stuff. What's your take on knowing that Splatoon three is about to come out? Um, anything that you're looking forward to to Splatoon three, like in terms of what you've heard about it? If you're into that, just kind of looking at you know, uh, what are they called like? Um, not spoilers, but like what, New things they've been putting out. Yeah, yeah, like whatever that's coming out for it. Like, what's your take on Splatoon three and how that you're hopefully like hoping it'll affect your stream or not? Or do you plan to like keep playing two, or do, are you going to go full on three when it comes out? Like, what's yeah, your... yeah. I I think we we've talked about this a little bit on the stream. I keep looking at the chat, like like yeah. it, <laughs> talking about them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we've talked about it a little bit on the stream, and I think for me. When Splatoon 3 comes out, I am going to migrate at some point to Splatoon 3 specifically like for the most part. Yeah. But I think for that whole fall, fourth quarter of the year, it's going to be a lot of playing Splatoon 3 mostly. And then for like private battles, going to Splatoon 2 every Saturday or something oh, like okay. that. And Just... still playing Splatoon 2 a little bit. Um, mostly because... I know that a lot of my uh, uh, community might not have the ability to get Splatoon 3 right off the bat, yeah. you know, while I'll be able to, yeah. thankfully, it doesn't mean everybody else will be able to. So obviously there's going to be a lot of people watching me play it versus us playing together, um, which I do like, like I like being watched, but I also yeah. like playing. So it's, it's going to be this weird thing. But as far as as the stream goes, I, I, I obviously the hope is that it'll do well for the stream because I'm already in the Splatoon 2 algorithm to an extent. Yeah. Uh, but it, it is going to be a little interesting because at, at some point it's going to be it may or may not be saturated. Um, so uh, that's something that or, may, or if I'm lucky, it, it won't be too saturated to where the algorithm still sees me because I'm obviously still a really small creator. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I mean everybody has high hope. Everybody in the community has high hopes that the yeah. channel's gonna explode a little bit <laughs> with Splatoon three. I'm 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 a very cautious individual, and I'm like, 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I what I say to myself, I suffer from delusions of grandeur. So it's like I'm always oh, okay. like I'm always like, this is it. This is gonna be the thing. Let's go. <laughs> so with Splatoon three coming out, I'm like, oh yeah, watch out, suckers. This is, <laughs> this is gonna be what's up. But I don't I know. I totally understand. But, that. but at the same time, I realize, you know, the tradition, you know, historically, it hasn't worked out that way. So I'm like, let's yeah. just let's just check that reality a little bit. A little yeah, bit. yeah, 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 um, yeah. It, it, but you know. At the we'll see. At we'll the... see is, is is my answer. Yeah, I'm I'm planning to go. Actually, I'm planning to go all in Splatoon three, just because I want to spend. I need to do more gaming like for myself, and I don't want to spend the time in Splatoon two to get like kind of better at the game. So I just want to spend mm -hmm. all my time on Splatoon three. So I'm like understand it. I'll grow with the community with it, and so I'm every time I'm playing, I'm like growing my character and my ability with the community rather than diverting my attention back to Splatoon 2. That's kind of what I'm thinking about it. Yeah, no, but, I understand that completely. Yeah. Um, I, I stream four times a week, five times a week on Twitch. Uh, okay. So I'm thinking three out of the four streams will definitely be Splatoon 3. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear that. I'm Since I mix up my streaming content, I'm not 100% Splatoon, but yeah. Okay, cool. Did you have at the beginning of the stream? You mentioned you might have had a, a few questions for me. Is there anything you wanted to yeah, ask? Yeah, yeah. I, I, so in your last interview, I saw, saw that you uh, were going to start teaching a class at a university. Is mm -hmm. that is that true? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, uh, I was interested to see uh, what you're actually going to be teaching. Yeah. So I just graduated with my Master of Fine Arts at San Diego State University. And hopefully I'll be teaching two classes, but the one I have locked in is this class it's a packaging design class so it's in the <clears throat> so it's in the um graphic design department in the art school and i'm going to be teaching uh how to you know teaching the students how to like make different packagings for products and stuff we're gonna start off oh wow yeah we're gonna start that's off that's super cool yeah no i'm stoked on it I'm, i've been doing a bunch of research and um one of the things i'm stoked about i was actually just talking about this last night one of the we're doing three projects and the first project is like a chocolate bar with some criteria around it. It has to be fair. Oh, that's cool. It has to be fair trade. It has to be, there's like different things. So like trying to be eco-conscious about some of the packaging because packaging is crazy. It's like, you know, obviously we, oh yeah, we, there's way too much packaging with things wrapped in plastic and they're harmful to the environment and all this stuff. But so like thinking about that, um, the other thing, the next project is like a mailer project. So like, you know how we do, there's just tons of, you know, mail order you know, monthly box things that you get. So it's kind of like related to that, you know, you'll be designing a package for that. And the third one is the one kind of I'm most excited about because it's about experiential packaging. So it's like you, you create a package that's like, like something experiential. Like you're like, it's just a joy to open the box for some reason. Oh, uh, like you, like, like, yeah, I understand. Yeah. And, and so part of that project, what I'm going to do is everybody's gonna be required to record a unboxing video like we do on YouTube and Twitch and all, or like on TikTok. Yeah, and yeah absolutely. So they have to do this unboxing so that either they have to unbox it themselves and show it off or they have to give it to somebody else and they record their experience unboxing it and then edit it down to be like a, this decent little like unboxing yeah, video. Yeah, because it, in, <clears throat> in it, in it, it, it's on it is its own form of advertising yeah right yeah 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 so that's really cool so that's basically well, that's awesome that's that's when the main class and i'm hoping to teach a drawing class i taught drawing last year so i really want to teach drawing again um they said they i might be doing it but they have to wait for all the freshmen to sign up for classes and see what right and yeah. see what they need because they've what they have got right now they already have full but i'm i'm on the class for like the overflow but yeah so gotcha, 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 gotcha. so that's yeah the art stuff is like that's really cool it's awesome but cool yeah thanks yeah no yeah you're welcome i uh i mean it's just super cool to see like people who who are artistically inclined like teach courses that they're passionate about yeah um i know that i like love teaching and oh. i love because i was a ta in college for like all like three years mm -hmm. and then like I've taken uh, contracts and gigs where I'm teaching children how to build things and, yeah. and do audio work and that sort of thing. So I just I just like that stuff. <laughs> so so we'll, this will be sort of we're, – we're getting close to the end. Yeah. But since yeah, you brought absolutely. up this idea of passion, this was actually something I have on my list of questions in a sense. So what is it – you said passion. Um, you know, for me, art, I love doing it. I'm good at it. 
but it's not my passion. My passion is really music is my passion. If I boil it down, like I play music, I love it. Nothing like I made a piece of artwork recently with, that I called, you know, basic, I can't remember the title because it's kind of a long title. Looking at a piece of artwork has never made me feel the way music does, basically, like listening to a piece of music, like something about music just burns, like makes my, it's like, it's just like my thing. Mm -hmm. um, so for you, like you like game streaming, you, you've gone to design things, you've done things, but, and we like comic books, you like a lot of things. We've talked about things you like. What's that thing that really makes you like you're passionate about, like gets like gets you excited, like you can't wait to do it. You just or when you watch it or look at it or see it, really gets deep in your core. Like you like feel yeah. it. Like what are those? What are some of those things? So I, one of those things is on one hundred percent sound design. Okay. Um. So I don't know how well you know theater works. Okay. Uh. But in theater we have something called Tech Week. Mm -hmm. where all that whole week is all about lights and sound and automation if you have it it's it's all about getting all those cues right getting those sound effects right getting those light the, that lighting right the whole thing that is like crunch time but it's also my most exciting time because it's i see the sound effects and my choices of music and mm -hmm. the music that maybe i've made all come together mm -hmm. And so the thing that makes me like it's like I, I sometimes I'll like just audibly make a noise. Like, yes, like, mm, like, like, yes, that worked um, is when like a sound effect just hits right or a yeah. music fades in and fades out. Right. Like yeah. just just the, the almost the construction of the the, the audio ecosystem happening yeah. in that play you know, yeah. is it just makes me like, it, it scratches an itch like no other. And the other thing, I, it would definitely be teaching, be, oh, getting that cool. payoff of a student or of a, of a peer or whatever being like, hey, you really helped me out. You helped me understand this. I, I, owe, I owe my thanks to you for that. And like, it makes me feel good because I helped someone, you know? Yeah, I like, I, I feel that. I'm not passionate about teaching, but I definitely, yeah. I understand that. Like, I like to be helpful is what I like. Like, if somebody honestly here's here's my like not cri kryptonite's not the right word but the easiest way to get me to do something is to go like zim we really need your help we, you're the only one that can do this like just to butter me up <laughs> just to make me feel like i'm needed well will yeah, get me yeah. will get me to like be help i'm like ah oh, okay i they I need guess. me they need they need the zim to come through for <laughs> yeah, them you yeah, know it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, like <laughs> but that's cool that's cool um what are you doing to this is a snowballing. Every time you say something, I'm like, I have another question. We won't go too much longer. I promise. <laughs> no worries. What, no worries. One of the things, what are you doing to bring in sound design to your streaming and other outlets? Like, do you, do you have yeah. plans to do that? It just feels like there's, it's a, it feels like it's, it would make sense like to have a things that your stream does that has sound design as a big part of it, either by showing how to do it, like having the other streams that are like, tutorial type stuff or videos about like making but also while you're doing your splat streams and other things like having like a a bunch of like cool sound design ideas that come into the stream like have you thought about that like what's your plans there if you have yeah i've actually thought about some stuff um it, again it, for me it's a lot of like i'd have to take a break from taking sound design contracts mm. and really only consider like and try to fix not fix the stream right but like yeah. help the stream more in that area yeah. in that soundscape right um as of right now really the only thing i have is like i play lo-fi beats when i'm sitting and just talking to people that's really it um i do have ideas in terms of like starting the stream uh you know like or, or ending the stream like and streamlining like sound effects oh when something happens let's do this let's put this sound effect on there yeah. or you know whatever the case is yeah um but you know it, it's it's untapped potential on my end for yeah. the most part though yeah yeah no i feel i feel i think there's after having this conversation with you i feel like we have we share a lot of similar things we both yeah understand audio like i'm a music i wouldn't say sound design particularly but i've been a musician and into audio kind of stuff because that's that's honestly a, one of the big reasons i like streaming in general and youtube and video making is the tech around it like understanding oh, yeah it's the, great stuff uh, understanding the audio understanding how to do video and having those toys in a sense to do it all um oh yeah and so i think Absolutely. i think it sounds like we share similar kind of ethos in that way um for sure let's let's wrap this up what are some for sure what are some what are 
where do you want like if people watch this video if this is going to live forever on the internet what's where do you want people to go do you want people to go i have linked up already your youtube channel so is that the number one priority like was that what you want right now like people to go to youtube and, and just sub to your channel and get, and, and yeah. navi navigate from there or do you have anything yeah, else yeah. That... no no youtube's great um yeah if y'all want to subscribe that'd be great help us get to our 500 goal now since we've reached 400 there's going to be a 12 hour stream when we hit 500 uh or if we hit 500 uh yeah it's easy it's free when? When? uh you don't have to pay anything when yeah right yeah um you don't have to pay anything to sub um yeah. and then or truthfully what i would prefer if you just hit the link watch a short or two make yeah. sure you actually like the things that i'm doing and then sub if you like it how about that oh yeah. cool 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 yeah yeah watch those videos that's like we need you to watch those videos right yeah cool well um is there i don't know is there anything that you wanted to make sure that you told the the internet the world that we didn't talk about today anything you were thinking about but while this started that you're like oh i hope i really get a chance to say this while we're um while we're having this kind of conversation not really no? i think the only thing that i think is um important is that you know if you really want to try do the thing that you want to do you just the, the first step is to do it yeah, just, right just do it you yeah. can't be like oh i want to be a dancer and not, never go dance yeah you know i feel that it. take the first step i feel that I'm, I'm like i'm very much i think a lot of people get caught up in perfection they feel like they can't share their thing until yeah. it's like perfect or whatever it's like no nah, just share the journey share your story share whatever it is you know um cool i appreciate that um all right i guess i guess we did it don't hang up I'll talk to you a little bit more after um, we end cool. the stream. But um, thank you, Lou Dog, Lou Dog, the angry Lou belly. Lou double G, baby. Yeah, <laughs> Lou Dog, get out. This was awesome. I had a great time talking with Me you. Too. I hope lots of people watch this video. It's on. You know, it. Yeah, I just hope. I hope a lot of more people get to know you. I had a great time. We'll keep in touch for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, man. Thank you for emailing me yeah you bet you bet all right so i, I sign off this is my sign off is uh to everybody be loving kind and patient we'll catch up with you soon peace peace out man